and be conscious of and follow to try to make a presentation as successful as possible. So your state, I'm talking about your physiological state here. Are you nervous? Do you get anxious? Which is always fun. Um, we can put this onto a full screen here and we can spin the wheel. Okay. So if your name comes up, maybe bring yourself off mute if you can. Uh, this is Chong. Yeah. Yes, I'm on. Excellent. Could you share what you think one of the top five reasons is why virtual presentations might fail? Oh, I think one of them is the interaction part. If it's just a one way, then people yeah. tend to switch off. If it's too lengthy, people will switch off. Screens, yes. Technology setup, lighting. Lighting is, yes, we'll cover lighting. It's one of the, the number one challenges we we face lighting as well, making it interactive, very much so. I got too drawn to watch your screen and I missed two questions. <laughs> Mentimeter gives me more options, it allows word clouds. There's other ones, there's Kahoot, uh, there's a new one called VVox where you can embed a poll live into a PowerPoint slide, but it's only on Windows. So. There's a lot of tools out there. There's a lot of tools being created. Find ones that work for you. Don't use them just because they're fun and new. They should be adding some form of purpose whilst having different engagement. Gives people a break from PowerPoint um, and you can do things in a more fun way. These are really just that engagement side. Now Miro on the right there, I use for facilitation. So this is more where I'm working with teams and I'm trying to either brainstorm ideas or strategic retreats. And it's effectively a digital white, whiteboard with templates. So I'm just going to the easiest way again is to show, show you these. Okay, I haven't got this, this one up, but this is Jamboard. If you want a nice free digital whiteboard, you've got a Google account, Jamboard works quite nicely. You can have these digital post-it notes. If you're used to post-it notes and brainstorming, this is Jamboard. Uh, it's from Google. See, this is a sticky note. This is Jamboard. It's, it's great. It's quite good. You can also have people collaborate on the same board. Okay, so you can have people collaborate in the group on the same board. So Jamboard is quite nice. I prefer personally because of the word design. I can have a persona template here. I can have a journey map down here. If you're into strategy, I can do a swap template. Or open up this initial box. You can see we've got a choice of automatically or manually. So if you've got, let's say quite a large room, you've got 40 people, you don't want to assign 40 people. So the easiest way is to click automatically, but you choose how many people go into a room through the number of rooms at the top here. So let's say I've got 40. I want five people in each team. So I'm going to create eight rooms and I just click eight and then I click create breakout rooms. So I think Nat and me, we were talking about how sometimes we always ask the audience if they can hear us, if we are clear. So um, I did do that before when I was presenting. So I'm trying to also see that sometimes that can be too much. If it becomes too much of asking whether you can be heard clearly as a presenter, it kind of shows that you're very conscious and maybe it doesn't come across as confidence like me. Yes. And that's one of the things that we want to avoid. So even when you're doing an in-person one, you don't really want to say, can you hear me at, at the back? It's not the worst question because you'd rather they can hear you than not, because people rarely will raise their hand and tell you that. But I like to address the audio beforehand. 